ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه وبركاته عليه يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدا وخلق منها زوجها وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان خير الكلام كلام الله جل في العلا واحسن هدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار As we know we have less than 2 weeks for the month of Ramadan bi idnillah jalla wa az wa nasalluhu subhanahu bi asma'ihi al-husna wa sifatihi al-'ula ay yuballighna wa iyyakum shahri Ramadan al-mubarak wa yuwaffiqna wa iyyakum ila al-qiyam bil a'mal as-salihati fi We know that the month of Ramadan is very close now We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to reach it and to give us tawfiq to carry out righteous actions in it. However, ya ma'ash al-ikhwah, before that time where it comes, we have to realize a certain affairs which will aid us. When the month starts, not within the month, but we want to now enlighten ourselves. But we want to start with the education now. From the affairs of what we know, what we desperately need in these days, which will aid us in purifying our souls, preparation, or out of preparation for the inevitable. As we know, we live in a city full of corruption. We live in a city with the people holding the mentality, in order for me to get to the next level, I have to be dishonest, I have to be sneaky. I have, to, I have to be involved in shiesty affairs. Those are the matters that the shaitan has decorated to us. To think in order to get to the next level, we have to indulge in affairs that displease our Lord in order to so-called achieve accomplishments in this life. It was nothing but deception. Because you see the state of affairs of our people today. The affairs is not just pertaining to worldly affairs and it being rectified. We're talking about the affairs of the soul and the heart in preparation for the meeting with Allah to be with that. From those affairs you'll find for the month of Ramadan, where now we have to make this affair habitual, have ourselves acclimated to it before the month starts. And I've reminded myself and our brothers about when the month starts, as we know from the important matters that will aid us in rectifying our world, worldly and religiously, rather religiously is the most important, is praying at night. The night prayer which a lot of us do not know until the next month of Ramadan comes. Not taking the opportunity after Salat al-Isha to maybe pray 10 minutes. 10 minutes after Salat al-Isha in our homes. Going in our corners or in our places or our designated places in our homes. Reading a page of Quran before you go to bed at night while you're praying. for those affairs which is pertaining to preparation of death 10 minutes and if you want start with 5 minutes of the night prayer 5 minutes all of us have now attained knowledge of 
being in a physical or physically condition where all the people now are saying, oh, you don't even need an hour at the gym. You can do 10 minutes. You can do 15 minutes and get results now. How about the same for your affairs of the hereafter? Five minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes of the night prayer. And wallahi, if you be consistent with it, you'll see a change in your life. Crying in the corner and asking Allah, oh Allah, make me ready for when it's time. Have me ready in my heart and my soul ready to embark upon the hereafter. Staying in that corner at night after Isha. Taking advantage of the time because we know it's very, it's moving very quickly. And the affairs that we know for Allah to be with Ta'ala said in this book, وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَتَهَجَّدَ بِهِ نَافِلَةً لَكَ عَسَى أَنْ يَبْعَثَ رَبُّكَ مَقَالَ مَحْمُودًا Allah to be with Ta'ala had talked about his messenger alayhi salatu wa salam. Where it said in the Sitti Hadith, oh excuse me, where it said in the verse in the book of Allah, Surah Al-Isra, فَمِنَ وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَتَهَجَّدَ بِهِ the night time, perform that prayer. After Isha, Nafia, something voluntary. And perhaps, rather, it will happen. You will be raised on the day of resurrection, the Maqam Mahmud. That high status that the Messenger of Allah will be given, where all the other prophets will want to have that status, but he will be given it, especially, alayhi salatu wasalam. The affairs are pertaining to the night and waking up on time for prayer in the morning time which comes in the authentic hadith of Abu Hurairah. And like we said, we have to backtrack in order to now put ourselves back on the right track. When it comes to authentic hadith, which is in the Sahih, where the message of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it talked about at night, يَعْقِدُ الشَّيْطَانَ عَلَى قَافِيَةِ رَأْسِ أَحْدِكُمْ إِذَا هُوَ نَامْ ثَلَاثَ عُقَدٍ يَضْرِبُ عَلَى كُلِّ عُقْدَةٍ عَلَيْكَ لَيْلٌ طَوِيلٌ فَرْقُدْ فَإِنِ اسْتَيْقَظَ فَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ تَعَلَى إِنْ حَلَّتْ عُقْدَةً فَإِنْ تَوَضَّأَ إِنْ حَلَّتْ عُقْدَةً فَإِنْ صَلَّى إِنْ حَلَّتْ عُقْدَةً فَإِنْ صَلَّى إِنْ حَلَّتْ عُقْدَةً كُلُّهَا فَأَصْبَحَ نَشِيطًا طَيْبَ النَّفْسِ وَإِلَّا أَصْبَحَ خَبِيثَ النَّفْسِ كَسْلَانٍ We know this narrative that the devil, the shaytan, comes upon you and he ties a knot on the back of your head. When you go to sleep at night. And he ties upon it those three knots. And then he strikes upon it. Upon those knots to make it firm. يَضْرِبُ عَلَى كُلِّ عُقْدَى And upon that he says, Upon you is a long night. Rest. And if he wakes up and he remembers Allah, one knot has been released. And if he now performs wudu, another knot has been released. And if he prays Salat al-Fajr, and he prays that prayer, all of the knots have been released and removed. And he will come upon the morning energetic, feeling good within himself. Tayyib al-Nafs. Except that he comes upon the morning, if he does in a voice that matter, Khabith al-Nafs to slam. That he will come out in a disturbed manner and very lazy. For the affairs, if you want to be beneficial, make your life productive, start off with the morning and the prayers that's pertaining to the night. Especially the affairs that's starting with the obligatory duties of our Lord. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wal'aqibatu lil muttaqeen Wala udwana illa ala al-zalimeen Wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allahu wahdahu la sharika lah Al-maliku al-haqu al-mubeen واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله سيد ولد ادم اجمعين صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين على مر الايام والليالي والشهور والسنين اما بعد from the other narrations 
where it was from those affairs in which the Messenger of Allah وسلم, had encouraged his ummah. To the point you'll find that some of the Sahaba, that the first advice that they heard from the Messenger of Allah والسلام, was pertaining to the prayers at night. And that those affairs are what distinguishes the people of those who are now embarking upon preparing for the hereafter. And the advice of those who are truly distinguished with certain characteristics that only certain people adopt that Allah will raise them by. What are those matters? As we know the hadith, where it comes on the authority of Abdullah ibn Salam. And we know that this narration is also in the end connected to Tirmidhi with an authentic chain with the great Imam al-Bani also de- declared it to be authentic. On the authority of Abdullah ibn Salam. Oh, as he said, when he first became the Muslim in the first days of his shahada, he said, أول ما قدم رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم المدينة إن جفل الناس إليه فكنت في من جاء فلما فلما تأملت وجهه واستبنته عرفت أن وجهه ليس بوجه كذا قال يا يا أولك ما كان أول كلام سمعته من منه صلى الله عليه وسلم أن قال أيها الناس أفش السلام وأطعم الطعام وصل الأرحام وصلوا بالليل والناس نيام تدخلوا الجنة بسلام. He said that the first thing that I heard from the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam when he came to Al-Madina, that the Messenger of Allah start with jihad, that the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam start with politics, that the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu make his focus upon being upon being in power. The Messenger of Allah went directly to the community where they were hurting. And he would rectify them from within. Until the affair became so superior that he was forced to now be in power and in charge. Because that slam started to grow because the people were working on purifying and rectifying themselves. Went within the people. Knew where they were hurting. Knew where their pain was, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided the Messenger of Allah to. He said, Abdullah bin salam he said, when he arrived to the Messenger of Allah, when he arrived to Al-Madina, the people rushed towards him. They didn't care about money, cars, how you look, sizing up people around you to see who got the nice car so I could get close to them to take advantage of them. All those other nonsense and filth that we worry about. He said, when the people came to Al-Madina, they hastened towards him. What would you think that was on their minds? The hereafter. Who's the final prophet to, to the humanity? That's what they was thinking about. How can I attain that guidance? How can I die in a sound state? How can I prepare my heart and purify it and embark upon it hereafter? That's what was in their minds. They came to the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, rushing to him. He says, I was amongst those who did that. He said, from when I contemplated his face and I seen it with, with a clear manner, stabentu. He says, I knew that his face was not a face of a liar. Because we knew some of the Sahaba, even upon just looking at the Messenger of Allah, they knew he was a prophet. He had the physical caliber of a prophet. He had the speech of a prophet, and this is where the speech came in. He said, I knew his face was not a face of a liar. He says, and the first thing I heard from the Messenger of Allah was this. Oh, people, spread the salams. Feed the people. Feed the poor, feed the indigent. Keep your family ties. This is the this is the speech of a prophet. Keep your family ties. Keep your family together. Don't walk off and abandon your kids. And sure enough, don't touch them. Keep your family ties and the family structure together. Pray at night while the people are praying. Beautiful speech from a beautiful individual. Beautiful individual. Beautiful speech. Pray at night while the people are asleep. You will enter paradise in peace. That in itself is enough for a khutbah. 
the speech of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if no one takes guidance and heed by that speech, then I don't think they did. Rather, I know for sure no one will take heed after that speech. Alayhi salatu wasalam. We know also the narration of Abdullah ibn Abd al-As, the great Sahabi. Radiallahu anhuma. Talk about these affairs of what we want to embark upon before Ramadan starts. Not when Ramadan starts, now. After Isha, take five minutes. You take 10, 20 minutes to be on social media indulging in affairs that angers Allah. But we don't take five minutes to now take advantage of that time to play a part in rectifying our affairs for the hereafter. Five minutes, we ask the people. Five. Read a page of Quran. And it's not about the length, it's about the consistency. It was so crazy as we know about these affairs and our worldly matters when it comes to work, when it comes to physical, going to the gym, even they say it. It's not about the length, it's about you doing it consistently and doing it right. The consistency. But these are affairs that they hear after. We, we can be consistent and not put so much of a burden on ourselves. Five minutes, then after a week you'll find that Allah will put in your heart, I could go ten minutes now. Ten minutes of a page. Every so now you got five days, six days out of a week where you have some form of night prayer for what? For your Lord's prayer with God. Out of preparation of your soul. Preparing for when the angels are now about to come and take your soul off your body. Do we think about that every day? We're supposed to. Because that's the ultimate conclusion for all of us. The hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn Aus. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Fil jannati ghurfatun yura zahiruha min baatiniha wa baatinuha min zahiriha faqala Abu Malik al-Ash'ari liman hiya ya Rasulullah qala liman ataab al-kalam وَأَطْعَمَ الطَّعَامُ وَبَاتَ قَائِمًا وَالنَّاسُ نِيَامُ The hadith we collect of Tabarani in his Kabiri Isnad in Hassan. The great Imam al-Albani also declared it to be Hassan Sahih. When the authority of Abdullah bin Amr ibn al-As قَالَ In paradise there is a place. He said his outward can be seen from his inward. And the inward can be seen from his outward appearance. And Abu Malik al Ash'ari said, Who does that belong to, O Messenger of Allah? Listen to this. Who makes their speech pleasant towards people? Liman al Tab al Kala. And we know we've been raised in a country to know how to make, say the most evilest things to people, most hurtful things. Liman al Tab al Kala. For the one who makes his speech pleasant. Able to enter happiness in a person's heart when you speak. Can we do that? Figure it out. What is the most nice thing I can say to someone to put a smile on their face? To make them feel good. Because we certainly know how to do, do it in a manner to make them feel bad. We, we professionals at that. Except for the one who makes his speech pleasant, tayyib, and that they feed the indigent. Feed the poor. Feed those who are in need. Feed those from amongst the people. And this is the last part that we'll leave off here. And a person that comes upon the night standing in prayer while the people are asleep. These affairs we need to start with now. Not waiting for Ramadan. Oh, Ramadan comes, all right, let's go pray Tarawih. No, now. Who's to let you know? Who's to say that you will reach it? Who? Who's guaranteeing? Your lifespan is and your, your jeopardy to reach Ramadan. Who? And like I said, we, and we challenge each other, all of us, all of us online, upstairs, the sisters, the brothers, we challenge each other. I challenge you, you challenge me too. Pray a page, or pray with your family, pray with your family at least five or ten minutes after Isha, after obligatory prayers. Getting yourself acclimated to when Ramadan starts. So no one will be complaining to say, man, 45 minutes was too long. 30 minutes is too long. No, you already have some type of what physical strength where you can do it now. 
where Allah has had his mercy upon us in these months. And look, brothers and sisters, it's not a sign to look to us in our state two years ago where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by his perfect ability, shut all the masajid down. We were all in the house praying. Did we forget that fast? What was our state two years ago when we were praying to eat in the house? Did we forget that fast? When we were praying in the night prayers in our homes? Did we forget that fast? What Allah can send and what, his, what he is capable of sending upon us? We need to remind each other of these things so it can put us back on track. So we can be grateful. Do we forget how many people have died in a period in the time frame of two years? Do we forget how many people have died? Even from amongst the kuffar, who they so-called deem and respect, a lot of people have died. Who they respect. And amongst our loved ones and dear loved ones from amongst our Salafi brothers, I have died. Kids we have buried. Kids. Did we forget? That is the prayer that we want to enlighten ourselves, contemplate on, so when a month starts, if Allah allows us to reach it, we'll be ready. The preparation is now, not when it starts. And may Allah to be with the Allah, Nasallahu subhanahu bi asma'ihi al-husna wa sifati al-ula and yudillana wa iyaakum min mudillat al-fitan ma zahara minha wa ma batan wa nas'aluhu subhanahu jalla fi al-ula bi asma'ihi al-husna wa sifatihi al-ula an yuriyana al-haqqa haqqan wa yirazuqana al-tiba'a wa yuriyana al-baatila baatila wa yirazuqana al-shtinaba wa nas'aluhu subhanahu ta'ala yatawallana وإياكم برعايته وحفظه في الدنيا والآخرة وإنه ولي ذلك والقادر عليه وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وسبحانك اللهم وبحمدك وأشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغرك وتب إليك وآخر الدعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيم الصلاة